Okay, first, if Job wrote his own book, he wasn't a Jew. So that takes care of that. But anyway, it does say, Paul says that these are the or they are responsible for the oracles of God. Okay, Paul wrote that about the Bible speaking of the Jews. Well, he wrote that about the Old Testament, not about the New. And finally, it says in the book of Colossians at the end, of it, we'll go there. I just want to get these things out while they're in my head because it's important when people say things that you have a way of defending that. Okay, in the book of Colossians... The New Testament represents the New Covenant. Yes, it does. And that includes the Gentiles. Yes, it does. And so, you know, that's an argument, but they will still argue that, well... The Bible's very specific that the Jews were the, uh, the, the ones that uh, came out with the, uh, you know, the oracles of God. And they used that verse from Paul. So you have to be able to defend against it. And in the end of the book of Colossians, chapter 4, it says here, um, um, it, it goes through and it gives a list to some of the people that have helped him. I'll start in verse 7. Tychicus, a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord will tell you all the news about me. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. Okay? All right? They will make known to you all things which are happening here. Then he goes on in verse 10. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, who wrote the, the Gospel of Mark, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision. In other words, they are the only Jews. From verse 10 down to verse 11, are, these are the only Jews of the circumcision with me. Okay, and then what does he say? You go down a couple more verses and it says... 14, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. If they're not of the circumcision, then they are not Jews and they are Gentiles. That answers it right there. There's no doubt about it. Luke was a Gentile and whether they want to try to snuff you into believing that he was a Jew for some reason or that he, he converted to Judaism. I've actually heard people say, well, that he converted to Judaism, so technically he was a Jew. He was a proselyte. Well, maybe he was, but he was, he was a Gentile. And he was a follower of Jesus Christ. As far as I'm concerned, end of stories, he was not of the circumcision because Paul excluded him from that in that note there. There's no error in God's word. There's no need to finagle that. Luke was a Gentile. Okay? Anyway, hate to divert so much on those things, but when they come to mind, to me, it's important that you understand them. So, um, go gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, the Lord God, tell me where you stopped. Okay, I'm going to read this real quickly and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done in Egypt. This is God telling him what to do. And I uh, said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt, which is what he promised to them. They know this is coming to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Okay, then you will heed your, vo they will heed your voice. And they did for a while at least. And you shall come, you and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, The Lord, the God of Hebrews, has met with us. Now please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Okay, that's not a lie in and of itself. Okay, he's saying, Let us go three days into the, the wilderness to a journey. Just because he's going to take them out further doesn't mean that he didn't fully intend to have them sacrifice first. Okay, so it's not a lie, and you know whether that actually happened or not is irrelevant. He's giving them a reason to go out of the land of Egypt to do something. Okay, so we don't need to take that as a lie in any way, shape, or form. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. Okay, I'm sure. You know, he knows the heart of men already, and he knows that the king of Egypt is not going to do that. We're going to finish through four, so go ahead. So I'll stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders, and I will perform among them. After that, he will uh, let you go, and I will, uh, he will let you go. I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed towards this people. So that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Did they go empty-handed? We already know. It says they plundered the Egyptians and the people willingly gave the stuff. Do you know, do you know that the Muslim world completely denies that the Jews are the covenant people of God and they deny that they say that the Jews have manipulated the Bible, okay, in order to show that they are the seed of promise and instead of Ishmael. Okay? Now, tell me, having gone from that premise from that premise that I just said, 
Do you know that a few years ago, a group of Egyptians went to sue Israel for plundering the Egyptians 3,500 years ago? And do you know that that suit was quashed very quickly after that? Why? <laughs> because it would validate the very words that they say aren't true. Right? But these people got together, and this was big in the news for a while. They have come together. They're forming a lawsuit against Israel to sue them for all of the stuff that they plundered. They had all these calculations of how many trillions of dollars or whatever. Israel owed them with interest and all this stuff. And, you know, they went through this big thing. And you know what? You've got to be a complete idiot to not think that through to its logical end. Well, right? Well, there you go. You're dealing with a bunch of complete idiots. I, it just never astonishes me, but yet it suddenly disappeared. And I said to myself, well, I haven't heard anything about that. And it suddenly dawned on me. Somebody must have said, we can't, we simply can't do this because, you know, if we do that, we are validating their very right to the land that we want back from them. So it, the whole thing is just insane. The whole controversy is just simply bizarre. But um, you shall not go empty handed. And then uh, once again it says, I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders which I do in your midst and after that it will let you go. And what did the people do immediately after the first time Pharaoh said no? They started to complain. You know, oh, you know. And uh, it, it, listen, he has said that he is going to do it. It may take a while. You know, have faith. He's made these promises, but in typical human fashion, we, we get a promise and then we stress over. I do it all the time because I have no idea what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. And I keep thinking, Lord, you ha I have to keep saying that out loud because if I just say it to myself, it doesn't work. Lord, you have a plan and you will direct my steps because if not, I'm just like these people. It, it, it is continuous. It's a continuous battle with me. I don't know if she hears me saying it, but I say it all the time out loud. Lord, you're directing my steps. This is your thing, Lord. Okay, 22 and we're done. Every woman is asked uh, her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters. And so you will plunder the Egyptians. Woohoo! Plunder them, baby. Okay, well, we're done for the day.